How was the how was the weekend, Jeff? I was talking on mute the whole time. It's hot here. <laughs> Yeah. how was it? We're not used to 90 degree weather. We're melting. It's the same here. It's it's ninety three today, ninety six tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. so yeah, it's burning hot. Wait, it's ninety six tomorrow. At least here. Uh I'm not sure about New York. Yeah, it's not as bad, I think. Let me see. Yeah, no, New York goes to 89 tomorrow, but it's the highest. Okay, At least that's where better. I am. Yeah. It's like 80, 96 here. I don't know why. Ah, <sighs> that sounds rough. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Marco working on in total out of stations now? I saw like a comment. Yeah, so so I think one of the things that that um, Tom mentions on like basically the reference attestation that that we talked about during KubeCon last year on the S bombs, um, I think that's related to that. So that's one of the things that we want to make sure that we we get plugged into. Yeah. We have another proposal that Mark was going to be working on around um, labeling. Um, so kind of labeling on, on software or labeling on basically the grouping stuff. Um, on so, a block you mean or or something well, else? some, so we, we have a, a use case where, where, um, a uh, team wants to be able to group yeah, container images. So we want to create a testation that does to that. I see. Okay. Yeah. So likely, I think we're still early in the design process, but likely we would bring that to, to in total. Right? I, I think we rather create that in total rather than, you know, roll out and have to, have to kind of like change it later again. Yeah. But that's like a generic labeling scheme. So it will kind of be similar to like the has metadata a predicate. I think quick note, um, I think both Marco and I will be traveling next week to California for a summit, so we will be able to make this call. Yeah. Okay, I guess we can get started and it's already five past. Um, usual reminder that um, of LFNT trust policies, um, also uh, call conduct policies from the LF as well as the SSF. Um, all the information is on the repo. Do take a look. Um, we're all here to kind of collaborate on on things that are common to us, not to kind of create anti-competitive behavior. Um, I don't think we have new folks on the call today. So, yeah. Cool. So I guess let's jump into what we have on the list. I, I Yeah. forget again, what's collect opens. <laughs> I think that's the stuff at the top. <laughs> That's like the open okay, items, okay. Oh, open pending items. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, Yeah. it's just a reminder to add stuff to Yeah. the Yeah. agenda. <laughs> Uh, I think the first one, the first one was a pretty quick one. Um, it's more of a question for Mike. So, 
uh, there's two PRs, right? There was that one that's basically like, oh, do we want to add the REST API, uh, you know, have the functionality to query via the REST for vulnerabilities and packages and so forth? Or that is that getting, there was that the other PR you mentioned about SOFA, I think, which has the ability to take GraphQL and wrap it, uh, uh, wrap GraphQL so that it acts like a REST API. Yeah, sure so, there's a, yeah. so I think the thing is just, once again, this is just purely like a, hey, if there's an easy solution here, why not just sort of take it? Like if there's something that we can just sort of throw a thing out there and say, hey, look, we're not going to necessarily support this. But, um, you know, if if the concern here is you don't have access to like understand all the stuff in GraphQL uh, and you want to just do something via uh, Rust, I'm uh, sorry, um, Rust. Um, but obviously like you can only do certain things because like the way that GraphQL works, right, is, is very, very, very different than REST. So it's, you're not going to be able to get, um, everything, but if there's a couple of easy wins, uh, there's that otherwise just, yeah, like ignore it <laughs> or, 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 or close it. Um, you know, I mean, cause I think the, the, the big challenge, right, still is like the majority of feedback we've gotten about Guac is, mm -hmm the GraphQL is too hard to use for most yeah. sort of simple use cases that folks want to use it for. And like, maybe the answer still is right. Like GraphQL is sort of the internal expert sort of API, but what can we be doing to sort of provide sort of the, um, you know, a better experience uh, for, for a lot of the other stuff. Um, or, and also like, are there things we can do to, to make the experience better from, um, uh, just even just from like use, you know, if somebody is using the GraphQL, uh, cause like, you know, I think a lot of folks have brought up, right. Like if you look at the GraphQL, Hey, it's like a, a query about certain information is actually like 15, yeah. 20 lines long. Um, and, uh, that like, once again, like that's probably fine when we're auto generating the GraphQL queries in some way, right? But it's going to be a lot more difficult for your sort of average dev who's just like, oh, I, I just want to run a quick thing. Um, and it's not, you know, it's not just like SQL where I could just be like, you know, select star from blah, where, you know, uh, you know, vulnerabilities is greater than zero, you know? Um, it, th that sort of thing is 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 something we, we, we don't necessarily have. So anything we can kind of... Um, and once again, it's not necessarily a thing we need to solve right now, just something that we've been getting some feedback about and maybe even probably worth pulling in like a couple of candidate users and saying, Hey, like, let's sit down with you. What does like, what does the ideal situation look like for you from yeah. a query perspective? Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Okay. Yeah. So I think I can probably do some research around it or what SOFA offers and how it works. And if it solves our issues, then let's yeah. see. I mean, okay. even some of this, right, is like, I like, for example, you know, what Jeff had made a while back, right, with the Python script, right? Mm -hmm. it makes mm -hmm. it very easy. Like if, the, you know, if we say, hey, look, we wrap the Python interpreter to run queries, like that could be potentially not, like everything's on the table. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think the, the answer is just, you know, uh, that that's just what I meant. So like if Sofa is like, oh, we spent an hour on Sofa and we realize it hits like not every use case, but it hits like 40% of use cases <laughs> and it's trivial to set up, let's go for it. If it turns out, no, it's going to be a huge amount of work, let's not go for it. Um, but either way, we should make sure that we sort of keep in mind the goal here is is just to make the user experience better. Yeah. I like the yeah. idea of like getting the use cases and I think that that would be good. My caution with the Python idea is um, it's kind of neat. Like it doesn't, it doesn't require generating a client. Like you could probably have like a, a Python script that's like 10 lines long to do some common stuff and like distribute it. But I don't know that people actually want to run a python script or if they you know if they're like my 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 idea for like the use case is something that they want to shove into 
like a pipeline or some kind of um, uh, mm -hmm. policy step. And I think they want to have a curl and that's it. <laughs> but oh. yeah. maybe I'm over, maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe that would be good too. No, no. So, so for what's worth, I agree that they want to curl. I think the thing that they want is, okay, so let's just take a step back and say, assume for a second that like, I know they just want to curl against like some special rest endpoint that gives them exactly what they want. I think what they're looking for is how do I like, since that rest endpoint won't exist, what do I need to do to create that? Right. Whether it's, you know, as an example, um, you know, and I know we had talked about this before is like, do we add something like almost like a, a, you know, a config file of queries and those config file queries get loaded by the rest endpoint. So you could just say, Hey, call this, you know, call the, the, you know, um, templated queries endpoint with this parameter, right. You know, or whatever, right. Like somebody wants to have some mechanism that isn't like, okay, I need to write all of this, uh, graph QL, um, but potentially, right. Like, or they need to have their hand held when generating that graph QL, right. Cause once they've generated the graph QL, great. I can just run a curl. I could just, uh, write my, a script. I can include it in a pipeline, but how do I go and take, you know, if I'm just looking at this, oh my gosh, how do I generate that graph QL? The, the, the graphy, you know, playground is reasonable, but you know, there's a lot there that's not necessarily trivial. Uh, Brendan. Yeah, I, I think I think we've kind of speculated that like yeah, some of the the big areas that are like kind of different user journeys that people will go across. Um, I I do like the idea of like having some users come in and then kind of like simulate this. And so like, oh, I want this. And then we kind of like give them an like, example output and see like what their next step is. Um, I think I think that would be valuable, but I'm not sure. Like, do you think that you have enough experience with users to know that? Or is this something that we should maybe organize like one of the community sessions to do a user session? Yeah, no, I agree. It should be a user session. I think the thing here is, yeah, my, my uh, you put it more succinctly than I did, but I, yeah, my point here is, I think we have a lot of users who are saying reasonable things like, hey, this seems a little too complicated, especially if I'm just exploring the thing. Like, I know I want to eventually do this complicated thing, but how do I get there? And how do we make that easy? Right. And, you know, just sort of saying here, like, like, I think we should be open to any one of these solutions, right? Oh, it gets included to the REST endpoint. It becomes a script. It's part of the CLI tool. It's, you know, we figured out a better plugin than the GraphQL playground. That's that's an even better way of of, of giving hints and helping walk people through an easy way to generate the, the queries, whatever it may be. Like, um, but I think, yeah, sitting down with the users, we need we need to sit down with them first. Yeah. So Okay. Um, do you know who, uh, so I think part of that is we have to design the session. The second part of that is that we need the users to you know good candidates for, I know like the Microsoft folks, Red Hat folks, I think from your side, you have the guide, guide wire folks as well. Um, I'm just going to write some of that down. Okay. Um, is this something that we could get some of um, what's his name in your your product person? What's the guy that does the interviews? Bill. <laughs> yeah. Like, does he have a good idea on how we can? design this or like a methodology like i'd be happy to kind of help carry out these interviews but i i think i don't have a good framework to 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 go about it 
Yeah. I mean, I think we could definitely uh, just ask him for advice, but yeah, I think it's, um, we would have to run it. Um, but yeah, I think we can definitely at least sort of say, Hey, look, for this open source thing, we're looking to do something that's not as intensive what we're doing yeah. internally here at Kusari. Um, but you know, I think I think that's that's reasonable. Um, I think there's you know some high level things even that we can just sort of state, which is one of the ones is like he makes it very clear that he is not making any, he is not presuming anything, right? He is he is just sort of saying, hey, here is some stuff. What what do you want to see? Right? What are the things you're worried about? What are the things you're trying to achieve? And I'm not going to try and push you in any one direction. Um, I think he does a very, very good job at that, which then leads to a lot of these insights of, oh, you know, whatever it may be. Like I could, everything I said could be completely inaccurate, right? Everybody could actually be saying, actually, you know what? GraphQL is the best. I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, da -da -da. Okay. Um, how do we want to advertise this? Do we want to just send out something on the mailing list, say we're trying to find user feedback, um, and then also send it out to our our friends that we know are using it, and kind of just like each of us to do one or two interviews. Um, Write down the feedback that we're getting. Uh, I mean, I think we should. I'm not sure if we can find other outside users, right? Like not not existing users like Guidewire and and Red Hat and stuff. Like people that have like started using the project you know like nisha for example from oracle right i think she was a great one be, mm -hmm. be a good one to ask kind of thing <laughs> i think so i think it's just like if we get an outside perspective i think people that have been close to the project you know they already know like oh yeah i, I know how it works i understand how this all this stuff is i think we'd rather have people that have not actually used the project don't know graphql and you'd be like hey go go do this and then people you know start asking questions like oh i don't understand I think that's probably more valuable. So maybe I think we need to probably first get together, you know, get a get a list of new users first that are willing to help us. And then we can go into like, hey, do some testing and stuff like that. But I don't think we want to use existing Guidewire, Red Hat, or Microsoft users. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think it's more for the onboarding scenario than the use case scenario. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, and I know that there's, uh, we could probably pull in um, Ben from our side as well on some of this. Like, he had some good insights around what is the, you know, like when somebody is looking at Guac, right, you want to make sure that from like the point of, hey, I looked at the doc to the point where I'm at least working with the thing and understanding how I'm working with the thing in at least in a basic way should be relatively simple because as soon as they start to hit any sort of friction, it's a reason for them to not continue. So I guess the the, the kind of what we're looking for is users that um so I think the prerequisite is that maybe you read the like the, the what is guac and why guac kind of pages that's like the base information and then kind of going from there what the questions you want to ask right so in a way it's testing our documentation as well yeah yeah because i mean even um recently created a a sort of presentation that i was following a lot of the stuff that's in our docs and i think our docs are good for when you know you have a reasonable understanding of guac the problem is like for a lot of folks like 
I'm sure the first thing that they do is they say, oh, this is the query, right? The query is the is dependency query, but you don't realize like, no, 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 you have to include the spec. You have to include this. You have to include that. And that sort of stuff is like, oh, actually it's kind of non-trivial um, for somebody who's just like, oh, I would just assume that I could just run uh, you know, this one line and get what I need when it's like, no, no, you need to include uh, you know, the is dependency spec or whatever. Um, before you can actually run the query that includes the is dependency spec um, and, and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'd be happy to kind of start writing down some stuff and then working with Ben to, to, to figure out. Um, does that sound good? Okay. All right. Any other thoughts on the, the, the stuff before we put the next one? That's good. Okay. Uh, next item is 1.0 discussion. Yeah, so I put this on the list. I think it's just like we just probably want to start, we probably want to start tracking what do we want for a 1.0. And you know, we did this previously. Brendan, you did this. I think on like GitHub projects, right? And you were creating like a. Um, I think of a milestone. Yeah. Milestones. Yeah. So that might be worth doing again. But then it's figuring out exactly what we want and what 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 does a one look like, and then what are the open tasks? This way, you know, everybody can work towards it at the end of the day, right? It's like okay, this is this is the end goal, and this and I think there's been a lot of open questions from the community, you know, like Red Hat and Microsoft and so forth. Like, hey, what is what does a one actually look like, and when is that coming? Yeah, I think we had some additional discussions in the doc as well. Let me look. Uh... No, it's a community meeting doc. Okay, I found it. Uh, one second. I know it doesn't paste go well here. I'm gonna paste in the notes and sit. Okay. Um, so let me copy these ones as well. Okay, so these are the ones, yeah. Yeah, we solved some of that stuff, right? The persistent, pub sub, blob store. All that stuff is kind of gone. This is basically a little bit of what we just talked about, right? Yeah, with the user testing, yeah. 
uh, authentication, I think. We said REST API, we don't want to tie it to 1.0. Oh, I mean, we have, we have it already, but it's just like, we, you know, we can add more features to it. Right. If you want to. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, I guess like the stability of it, right? Like it, I, the API is open to changing, which I don't think, I don't think so. Right. I think they're all considered experimental. Mm -hmm. Or at least not, not some, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's the tricky part. Um, We probably want to have some kind of um, versioning for the REST API. It's not versioning, but like a state. Yeah. Whether it's alpha, beta. Yeah. Yeah. Um, authentication, I don't think we, we said we want to do this, right? Yeah, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, not sure. I think we do some more research on that. I'm not sure exactly how we want to do that either. So kind of a question for me, hi. He had some ideas around this authorization, especially. Hmm. Is it currently requested? I feel like it hasn't been, but I think like, yeah, no. I feel I like this is for now. Yeah, I feel like this is hot, especially to do for the GraphQL. I, I would yeah, imagine exactly. we can do this for the REST API and just put it behind a proxy and be done with it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think some other stuff hot. like uh, the C sub, I think definitely needs to be re architectured in some way, at least. Or, right. I know we were talking about this briefly, but it's like maybe the C sub stays the same for, maybe we need like a more robust one for, for production type use cases, but for like open source demoing, we can keep the existing, I don't know. I'm not sure if this should, should um, be here actually. I mean, I think the question is like, Like the, what's, what's the assumption of 1.0 that what's, what's the messaging we want to tell people at 1.0, right? I think maybe we revert to that. Like what does 1.0 mean for our users? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good, that's a good question for community also. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jeff. Um, yeah. For me, it's that you can start investing in block which means that we're not going to do something that makes you have to start over. And that's it. So yeah, maybe the C sub isn't the most reliable or, you know, whatever, maybe it's not too huge scale, uh, that, all that kind of stuff. But if you stand up Quark and let's say you start putting in S bombs, uh, maybe at, some guidance that the product that the community has as far as like what the what Quark can handle uh, next year, you know, you don't have to delete it. Like you can continue on. So as long as we think that we have the data model in a way in a place that you know future migrations will bring everybody forward, um, then I think we're that that in my opinion that's the most important thing for 1.0. So I'm trying to add a little bit more detail onto to what you're saying, right? So I think once they like you said that you want to make sure that when they start investing in it, 
they will make it so that you don't have to start over. I think one translation of that is uh, any update to like later major or minor versions, they should be able to just do a deployment and it shouldn't break anything. And a database migration, yeah. Okay. Oh, I guess that's a that's a question about the database migration. It's like, do we wanna? I think having that stability is is it's hard across major and minor versions unless you're just adding fields. Right. Um, Unless the new field is in the new field has to be nullable or have like a default value or something like that, right? Yeah. Does N kind of handle that gracefully for you? Yeah, part work it does. All out. Yeah, okay. so there's a at the Atlas has the migration ability to migrate, and yeah, oh. it's you can make no no uh, nullable fields, but if you make them non nullable, then you have to. I think Atlas does have the ability to like add default values and stuff like that to the migration. So existing existing data, I mean. Okay. So there's stuff stuff around that. It doesn't have to be nullable, I think. But again, we probably want to do some more testing just to make sure that it works well. But yeah. So I think this also means that all components need to be. What do you mean? Components need to be what? Yeah, I can't think about it. Needs to be like um. The interfaces have to be like all the component interfaces have to be stable. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, and if we're and if we're planning on doing the whole um, like software tree change, where it wouldn't work with a the migration, then we have to commit to writing a tool or something like that. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, okay. So I'm writing out all the different components that we have, right? Um, like their subscriber. Are you talking about like the CLI interfaces? Or... Yeah. The C sub. Is, is, yeah. there, is there an interface for that one? Yeah. <clears throat> um. So the collectors collected the CSAP and the ingester. All right. The ingester connects to the assembler. The assembler connects to the GraphQL API. Uh -huh. GraphQL connects to the back end. Ideally, I should just drew this in the graph, but uh, client connects to GraphQL API and also the REST API. So the fire talks to the GraphQL, right? Correct. Yeah. GraphQL and, and the ingester. Well, it's kind of like the collector, basically, but yeah, it goes to ingester also. Oh, right, okay. Ingester. And then... Um... I mean, there's yeah, I the ingester. That. Ingester also has like processor and stuff underneath it, right? Processor and guesser. Um. Yeah, I think it's fine though, right? Okay. Maybe that's small library. Um. So which ones are, are we? I think. Certain certain ones are stable interfaces, right? I think the ingester with the pops up is a stable interface. Yes. Wait, the collect up talks to the no the ingester talks to the oh yeah ingester talks to the collect up forever. 
Um, I think ingested interface is pretty much stable, right? <coughs> yeah. Let's collect green. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, the interface is stable. Yeah, I think we've been we're adding like actually like I've been adding the the clearly defined certifier or ingester. So, but the interface stays the same. So I think that's good. Yeah. The assembler may change depending on GraphQL changes. Like if we add something new, right? Like that, that is deployed and stuff like that, what are we gonna change? So, no, so but, but that one we want to say non breaking changes, right? Non breaking changes. Yeah. So what would you consider a breaking change here? Like what is the what is the purpose of a stable interface in a component? Mm -hmm. I think the idea here is that we can easily mm -hmm. say like, oh yeah, we can just totally revamp like the way the ingester works because we like if we make any code changes to ingester, it's, the interface is well defined, therefore uh, and stable, therefore we you know, even if we redeploy a new ingester, it won't it won't break anything else. Whereas I think on the contrary of that, it's like for example, collect subscriber. We're not sure whether the interface will change. So, in but why does it case, matter to the user if the interface changes? Like, I think it doesn't between... matter too much to the user, but it matters to us in the sense of like these are things that are a little bit more fragile. Why does it? We... I don't. I don't think that it would be a requirement for 1.0 if to have a stable interface on something that we can change without affecting the user. Well, I guess like in the in the case of the collect subscriber, if we change it to a pub sub, yeah. how will the deployment migration work in that case? You have a, a database, new, you have a deployment. There's a new Helm chart or a new um, compose file. It starts up Nance. But then how do I then, like the migration becomes difficult because now you have a component where. How is it difficult to shut down one compose and start up a new one? Well, it's not difficult, but then you're losing the data, right? Yeah, and you need a way to migrate Which, the data. The data that's stored inside of the collector subscriber. Collect subscriber. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense to me. But that's not necessarily like the interface. Like we could throw in new components in the ingestion pipeline or change things around with like the, the you know how the things start up and talk to each other as long as it doesn't break upgrade, right? Yeah. I don't want people to to rely on the collect subscriber and then we're like, oh yeah, you can't really use this collect subscriber anymore. And then we have to kind of code up this migration, migration, migration. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like if we're sure that like the thing is not working well and we want to make it stable or, you know, we know that there's going to be a migration that might involve data loss, then that's something that seems 1.0 re requirement there specifically. Yeah. But what among these things stores data other than the collector subscriber? Nothing else. I think nothing else, yeah. I think, yeah. Well, the certifier, the certifier have no, any state? No. No, it checks the GraphQL. It, it queries GraphQL for like, hey, you know, what's, what's your status in terms of like, hey, have you, you know, is there a certified vulnerability, for example, and how old is it? It's going to query the GraphQL for it. So it's not really storing anything locally, and like a map or something. It's just going to recheck every single time from the database.
Oh, I think one we we missed the one thing here, which is just like the user talks to it directly. Unless we say everything goes to client, which I don't think we want to do, right? Because people just may want just want to call something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like we should, we'll see, but I think maybe eventually, I think we should just not give people access to the GraphQL. <laughs> Do you want to say the client is, is, can change? Like, I, I, I think the assembler, the GraphQL, we are pretty sure are pretty stable, right? Like the assembler, uh, the GraphQL API. These are things that we can. We we want to say that these are stable, um, stable, and since you're not gonna have any breaking changes, where you, uh, interface like this one is directly use a calling GraphQL API. Um, yeah, I mean the only one I can think of is the is dependency one right now. May want to change that for one point oh. Okay, so then that's. Right, because it's like right now it's you know, the package name to package version, you know, all that stuff. I think we should resolve that, remove it if it's not needed, because it's adding unnecessary complexity. Okay. Uh, and then I think let's resolve that before we know. I think that sounds like yeah. that's blocking. I'm not confident with the collect subscriber, and I don't know whether we want to necessarily. Rely on that. Like what if if we were to say like you don't use the collect subscriber for certain things, what what would have to go? Like we have like here's the stable deployment and here's the experimental deployment, right? Like until we say that the collect subscriber is stable, I don't think we want people relying on it. Or well, what are the thoughts there? So is the question should is the question should we get it to a reliable state for one point oh or is it so yeah I, I yeah I think that's a question or if not if we don't get it to a reliable state then what's the other the story for 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 stability I mean there's like we could have the uh Collectors always querying the graph or something, acquiring GraphQL, even though that's not optimal as a backup or as a, yeah, I don't know. Which the, the collectors that rely on the collect subscriber is depth of depth. And anything uh, else? And uh, OCI? OCI, oh, it's okay. not really being used at this point, but yeah, OCI is another one. What about the scorecard? Yeah, that is scorecard. No, I don't think so. Okay. No? Okay. Because, no, because we get our scorecard information from depths.dev actually. Well, I guess that's it, that one that Nathan wrote, but I'm not sure that in this case with the... That's a certifier. That's, that's a right. certifier? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I missed out one. There's OCI depth of depth and there was one more. I, I, you mentioned that. I forgot. No, I think that's it. That's it? Yeah. I mean, the alternative is to say that don't run depth of depth for now. <laughs> like, although we get information from it, right, today. Yeah, that's the only thing. <laughs> well, we could change the existing C sub to be lossy, like only deliver pearls to the connected 
collectors. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Sorry, I don't think I understand. Well, I mean, like, the reason why it's not scaling is because it's trying to save the pearls from forever. And if there's, like, currently connected clients, then it could just deliver all the pearls to those, and that's it, and then forget about them. Hmm. Uh, I kind of like that. Then that, Instead of, that, yeah. Yeah. Instead of saying, don't run depths.dev, we could say, yeah, you could run it, but if it goes down, it'll forget about stuff. Yeah. And so if you have a TTL on there and then you do an upgrade, you're basically like, oh, yeah, yeah. You just, you lose that one slice, which is in the end of the world. Anyways, yeah. Is it the end of the world? Yeah. There's a number of solutions we could do for 1.0 that's not something that's perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, we could say you can run it, but it will get overwhelmed. We can say we can adjust it and make it lossy. We can change change the collectors to just query the graph, and it would be slow. Um, so I think... So I think the, the definite thing we have to do is like figure out and implement a black subscriber stability story. All right. I think this is whether this is means like a lossy uh, temporal um, ability to kind of like with some kind of like playbook to 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 um, fill gaps if we did. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like that suggestion. Um, collectors should be all good, right? I don't think these are going to break it. No, no issues with that. Um, client stability, is that something we want to have? Not, Not necessarily, right? No. Certifier is pretty stable as well because it relies on the GraphQL is stable. Um, yeah, I think for the certifier, I think one of the improvements we could make is make more uh, specific queries, I think, right? Like give me only the packages back that require uh, that require me, you know, rechecking OSV, for example, stuff like that. It's, it could be more efficiently done at the database level instead of you doing it, you know, at the, at the certify, certify level, the client side, and then, you know, checking neighbors and other queries and stuff like that. So there's improvements that can be made, but again, it's not a breaking change. I guess it's the expectation that they're going to use the client as part of some some script that we have to give stable. I think that's that's more kind of the worry that I have. But I think both in the client and the REST API case, right? I, I think the question there is, do we want to say that here's a call, um, like can someone put the guac one CLI within their GitHub actions and know that like one day when Guac is updated, it will still work. And I think the I answer think to I, that is no. I think for minor versions, we can, we should um, ensure that, but I, I think it's understandable to require something to be changed on a major version upgrade. Okay, so this one, so client was saying that this is, um, Stable within minor versions. 
Yeah. Um, and then REST API, do you want to say the same thing? Uh, no, that, I think that has its own. Uh, okay. I think it has its own life cycle. So once we say that's stable or B1, if we have a stable B1, then it should be, uh, it should support. Have that's cool. that. Yeah. Um, what is the expectations on major releases and minor releases that we want to tell people? Yeah, so again, like, I think the main thing I was talking about up, up above is like over across major, like we want, we want to have people use Guac and not have to start over even across major versions. But I think some things that are acceptable across major versions that you might have to change are even like GraphQL queries, like if you have wrote your own, um, if you have if you have to make tweaks, change names, that kind of stuff, I think it's acceptable across major versions. Um, same thing with the CLI commands. Like if you have the CLI in a uh, in your pipeline or in or runs running somewhere in a script, and you have to change a flag or add something or remove something, I think that's okay. So almost anything I think is <laughs> is fair game across major as long as there's not a great path. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Uh, maybe not like having to learn the ontology from scratch, right? Like, <laughs> you know, that would be. So can we say like changes should be like less than less than five minutes type of changes? Yes. Um, And then what are we expecting? I think we want to have also a reasonable cadence of like the expectation of how often these will happen. Do we want to say like once every six months, <laughs> once every every quarter? Yeah, I think six months is good. I mean, I would okay. target you know, more than once a year, but. Yeah, I mean, at least that's like, I, I feel like every quarter saying like, oh, you have to go make changes to occur every quarter. Yeah, that's too so, much. Yeah. Six months is almost too much, but, but we can promise six months and, and aim for once a year at most. Yeah. Um, are we doing, we're not doing backporting changes, right? <laughs> we are not going to support that. What does that mean? Like if you have multiple major versions, you know, we have minor patches, we're not going to repatch the uh, no. major version. Let's go down for this list. I uh, how how do people feel so far with the discussion? I, I feel like this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think yeah. there's kind of two categories here. Like, there's the stuff that we're promising, and then uh, the highlights of stuff that we want to fix. That you know, to kind of meet those promises. So, mm. I think we can kind of divide it up into those and distill it down into a few things. Um, I think that's yeah, one think, aspect. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go. Yeah, no, I, I think the other one is, is that, you know, the changes we're making to the, the software identifier stuff. What is that gonna look like? And how are we, you know, if it's, you know, if it's, it's not gonna be part of 1.0, let's say, right? Then what is that? I was porting that over, like, what is that going to look like? Is it, is it very, very complicated kind of thing? Like, can we make a tool that does it for us quickly? Or if it's very, very complicated, then maybe we just, maybe we bring it into 1.0. But I think we need to have like a, you know, some kind of an understanding of what is this going to look like and how hard is it going to be 
if we move to 1.0 without it and then bringing people over to afterwards, right? Migrating them over to that. What is that going to look like? Yeah, my thought on that is the software identifier stuff is still going to take a while. Um, okay. Granted, also like the pull, the pull, this standardization discussions are also happening and like we had to pick all those things up. Um, I don't think it would be like my, my take on it is that I feel like this would be something that's going to be the next, um, Um, oh wait, I think I've been mixing up major versions and minor versions. Sorry. <laughs> um, I think this this will be something like a two a two point oh, and I think for like a two oh, okay, we would we would have to. Like, I think the worst case scenario is like we have something that reads the database and then ports it to another database, right? Which is, I don't think it's the, probably yeah. wouldn't be that out of world. <laughs> it, it'll be a significant work, but I think at that point, if, I think the worst case scenario isn't, isn't that bad as well. Okay. Um, I, I realized I was thinking, I was writing major versions, the same major versions, but I was thinking minor versions, um, over here with the, the CLI changes and GraphQL API changes. Um, is it consistent with what everyone was thinking or everyone was thinking that this was made, this is major versions, not minor versions. No, I was thinking if you. If you change, yeah. well, what does across mean? Does that mean across a single major, or does that mean oh, from one okay. major to the other? <laughs> uh, with going from one within. major to the other. So, so yeah. Right, so, okay. so this I, I was thinking like across major versions, as in like between minor versions. <laughs> um, but I don't know whether that's the same thing that people are thinking about. I was thinking. So let me let me clarify with, this. So this is like 1.2 to 1.3. Okay, so I don't think you should have to change the CLI or minor GraphQL changes, but going from 1.2 to 1.3, I think those should stick around. Are oh, those should stick around? Yeah, I think going from 1 to 2, you have to use 1.0 to 2.0. We can expect CLI changes and minor GraphQL changes. So we're saying the CLI is stable. Yeah, yeah. for at least the, for at least six months, <laughs> which isn't that big. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So like we can add oh, wait, wait. options or flags. Call... Okay. I, I, yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess if we want to revamp the, the, Dima in the future, then about what that would be a, a I probably call that, I guess. <laughs> if we want to change the schema, use the, the GraphQL schema. Yeah, I, I think what I was saying, like, I, I, I think these will be kind of stable at least for like the next one, one, two years, right? All these things. Yeah. I don't think you have to like, but like Kafka thing around like the software identifier stuff, like that, mm -hmm. that may. To do some breaking changes in the future. So like Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's like more a GraphQL change that's more than five minutes is fine too for major. But like we need to have good documentation for how to how to micro, how to change your your queries that you've written, that kind of stuff. So we're saying for minor versions these shouldn't change. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, those shouldn't change. Okay. But we can add we can add new fields to GraphQL that won't break any queries, existing queries. We can add I mean I don't know that we should add new fields. I think that should be a major change, but we could. 
And we definitely can add options to CLI or, or new CLI commands. Okay. Uh, I think that's how they're discussing this. I feel like. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think then we had to talk about what's a minor version as well. Um, right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, also, we are already in time. So. Yeah. Cool. That's good. Um, right. Yeah. Review some PRs if you guys get some time. Uh, and Can yeah. you? Okay. And then they're you all, all marked the PRs, right? Okay. Yeah, they're marked in each review. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Bye. See you. All right. Thanks.